Like Carson Wentz has been playing really well. The Lions sacked him five times and he still put on this kind of performance. There's nothing really more you could do with that. Like we have to pressure him. But also, we have better. We have a better secondary. So you know, even if we have him under pressure, he's making throws under pressure. Then we we have those guys downfield that we can rely on to make the plays downfield. But there's really, I mean, you just got to give kudos and hats off to Carson because you're taking five sacks and you're still putting up that kind of passing performance. What's up? What's happening? What is popping? What's going on, you guys? Welcome back to another great edition of Simone with the Speed Suits. I'm Simone, bringing you guys daily sports talk. So if you're new here, if you're old here and haven't already, subscribed to my channel. Stop what you're doing. Leave a comment. Subscribe. Keep rocking with me. Also, make sure you check out the links down below. The first one is to buy me a coffee to help you this channel. The second link is to shop the official Simone with the Speed Suits a merch collection. Get you the classic tee, the wavy tee, or the flower dye crew neck. And lastly, guys, if you do not do anything else, Turn your notification bells on because you don't want to miss a single video or a single live stream. But y'all, it's Thursday, so you know what that means. It is time for the Eagles matchup breakdown. This week, the Birds are traveling to D.C., Virginia, the DMV, to face the Washington Commanders, to face Washington Wentz. You know what I'm saying? Washington Wentz this is going to be our first time facing Carson Wentz this season. Could be the first of many if, you know, things pan out for him um, in Washington. And so far, it's been going well for him in Washington. Um, the team did drop last game against the Lions, so they are going to be coming to this game looking for a win, especially since the way that Washington Lions game went, the Washington Commanders were starting to get their groove in the second half. They just didn't. They just got their groove late, so they're definitely going to be coming to this game with momentum and wanting to get that win that they felt like they should have got against the Lions. Now the Eagles are coming into this one two and zero. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Riding a great win on Monday Night Football against the Vikings, and we cannot drop the ball. We have to um, continue the momentum that we have. Now, again, like I said. Jalen Hurts versus Carson Wentz for the first time. Well, this ain't the first time because, you know, they was battling in our QB room. But this is the first time they be going against each other on opposing teams. And, you know, those two guys are always going to be, you know, they're always going to be connected. But, guys, we got to get into the matchup. So, this game is it's a lot of things to look out for in this Washington um, Eagles game. Now, the Washington Commanders are a solid team, but they they just don't have, they don't they're a good team, but I the 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 Eagles are a better team. Um, but there are a lot of things that we have to look out for in this matchup. So first off, number one, our secondary is going to be needed today. We are today. I said today. The secondary is going to be needed this week. That momentum, that great performance we put on against. Um, the Vikings, we're going to need Avante Maddox. We're going to need Darius Slay. And we're going to need James Bradbury this week against the Washington Commanders. They have to put on another great performance because it's one thing. I mean, shutting down Justin Jefferson was amazing and great. But the Washington Commanders, they have a much more deep wide receiver room. So when we were going into the game against the Vikings, we really just had like Justin Jefferson's circle. Like, how can we stop Justin Jefferson? Will we be able to keep up with Justin Jefferson? Boom, 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 boom. They have a lot of really good pass catchers in Washington. And Wentz, have been, Wentz has been doing a good job spreading the ball around. So, well, um, Curtis Samuel has really been Carson Wentz's, I guess you can say, favorite target so far this season. Um, but they have, of course, Curtis Samuel, Scary Terry, um, Johan Dotson. Um, I think he's a rookie. He's He might be coming to his second year, but I want to say he's a rookie. He has been playing well for them um, this season. And then, of course, J.D. McKissick. So they just have a really balanced group of wide receivers. They have a really balanced group of playmakers. Um, so it's not just like shutting down Justin Jefferson, Justin Jefferson, Thielen, they're only two, um, the only two options really for Kirk Cousins, only two guys we got to hone in on. Um, they have a very diverse and deep group of receivers in Washington. So this is going to be another big week and big, um, task for our secondary when it comes to, um, limiting those, limiting those plays downfield. So that's one of my biggest things to watch out for, um, is shutting the secondary has to be a no-fly zone again. The secondary has to be locked down again because Carson Wentz can find 
any of those guys, any of those four guys. But like I said, Curtis Samuel has so far been his favorite target. But we all know what Scary Terry um, can do. And again, the the I want to say rookie Dotson. Um, he might be coming to a second year, but I want to say he's a rookie. He has been playing um, really well as well. And then, of course, JD as well. So the Washington Commanders have a very deep group of receivers. That's one thing, one of the biggest things we have to be on the lookout for. What's up, you guys? It's me here interrupting me to let you know that I am partnering with Prize Picks this NFL season to bring you guys a 100% deposit match if you use my code Someone with the Sports. Prize Picks is a daily fantasy app where you can make picks and make money. So use my code Simone with the sports and they will match your deposit a hundred percent minimum $10 up to a hundred dollars. But y'all help me out with my picks. Who should I pick the more or less on download the app? Let me know. Cause I'm trying to make some money. Help your girl out. But now back to the video. Now on the flip side, Washington secondary where our secondary has been our strength. Washington secondary has been one of their biggest weaknesses so far this season. And Jalen Hurts, Devontae Smith, A.J. Brown, Quez Watkins, Zach Pascal, we have to exploit Washington's secondary. They got William Jackson and Kendall Fuller. Both of those guys have been underachieving so far this season. Both of those guys rank near bottom in the league when it comes to cornerbacks in coverage. Out of 101 cornerbacks in coverage, those guys are like ranked 85 and 90. They have been doing a piss poor job when it comes to, you know, making plays downfield. So we have to do what we need to do when it comes to exploiting those guys. Jalen Hurst looked so good in the passing game last um, week against the Vikings, being able to um, spread the ball around, share the ball around, make all the throws he needed to make. And I think that's that's going to, I mean, it's definitely going to be huge this week, but um, being able to pick apart and um, expose the Washington secondary, that is going to be huge. So last week, Jared Goff passed for four touchdowns. Four touchdowns, 256 yards against Washington secondary. I think Jalen Hurts would be able to do the same. And this was Jared Goff being under pressure as well. Um, we'll talk about it more, but I believe Jared Goff took he, five sacks last week. Um, no, Jared Goff took three sacks last week. Jared Goff took three sacks took three sacks but he also threw for over 250 yards and four touchdowns so like I said the the Washington football team was getting that pressure up front but the secondary just was not living up to the task and doing what they had to do down the field in coverage so we have to exploit that that's going to be big for us we have the playmakers we have the quarterback to do that that's gonna be one of the biggest things I'm gonna be looking out for is Jalen Hurst airing it out exposing those guys downfield William and um Kendall Fuller so be on the lookout for that now one of the big things is of course Carson Wentz now the thing um Carson Wentz has been playing really good this season um and we know he knows our team our team knows Carson very well um especially those veteran guys up front um on the defense they know Carson Wentz well going up against him in practice boom 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 we have to get pressure on Carson Wentz that's a anytime you're playing anybody it's always a key get pressure on the quarterback get pressure on the quarterback right but Carson Wentz has been playing so well under pressure this season and especially last game against the Lions so last game Aiden Hutchinson had three sacks three sacks for Aiden Hutchinson um Carson Wentz took five sacks Carson Wentz took five sacks last week five sacks but he still threw for 337 yards three passing touchdowns and he was 30 for 46 which is like 65 percent um completion rate and this was him under pressure so it's not one thing just to get pressure on Carson Wentz and honestly I don't even know like Carson Wentz has been playing really well the Lions sacked him five times and he still put on this kind of performance there's nothing really more you could do with that like we have to pressure him but also we have better we have a better secondary so you know even if we have him under pressure he's making throws under pressure then we, we have those guys downfield that we can rely on to make the plays downfield but there's really I mean you just got to give kudos and hats off to Carson because you're taking five sacks and you're still putting up that kind of passing performance the the breakdowns that you're having up front on the offensive line um having to scramble make those tough throws on the run that's just all kudos and shout outs to him i'm saying put pressure on him 
But the Lions put pressure on him, and it still didn't work. Like I said, three touchdown passes. So the key for us is, like I said, our secondary coming up big because he's obviously doing well under pressure. You can't ask your defense to give you more than five sacks. That's a lot of sacks. Um, I can't say, oh, we need to sack him ten times then. It's obviously not the sacks. It's obviously the people downfield uh, making those plays when he when he does get the ball off. So, of course, we want to get that pressure. We want to continue to get that pressure, that pressure, that pressure pack on Carson Wentz. But at the same time, again, this is a big – it's going to be another big week um, for the secondary uh, because he will get that ball off. At least he showed it last week against Aiden Hutchinson and the Lions. But – on the other side of the ball for the Washington football team, their pass rush last week, um, they had three sacks. Darren Payne had a sack. He had five pressures, a tackle for loss, and four tackles against the Detroit Lions. Um, so we're going to be looking out for the Washington football team to be putting that pressure on Jalen Hurts, especially since he's someone who's going to be rolling out the pocket. He's going to be running a lot. They're going to be keying in and honing in on him a lot. Jalen Hurts last week took – three sacks last week he took three sacks um we do want to see him getting more protection than he did last week because we don't want him that wear and tear on the body you know what I'm saying so we do want to get that protection for Jalen Hurts but we also do know at least he proved last week that he he was solid very solid under pressure last week against the Vikings um I'm not saying don't protect him he's fine but we want to get that protection but also like I said this Washington secondary um so far has been underachieving so even if Jalen Hurts is under pressure um, he still should be able to get those balls off and get the ball downfield throw the ball away just don't hold on to the ball too long we don't want to get a bunch of you know backed up plays and backed up drives um, from holding on to the ball too long and taking sacks because that is one thing last week with Carson Wentz holding on to the ball too long and taking unnecessary sacks we don't want to see that um, with Jalen Hurts this week so just getting the ball off not trying to take any unnecessary sacks and then also the offensive line you know get him that protection but I don't think there'll be any problems this week with Jalen Hurts airing it out and getting the ball downfield um against this Washington secondary now lastly my last key my last thing to watch again is run 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 the ball so Miles Sanders has been popping. Miles Sanders has been playing really well. He's definitely back. Somebody tell him that Miles is back. So last week, the Washington football team gave up 191 rushing yards. 191 rushing yards on about 25 attempts. It was about eight yards per carry. They could not really stop anything on the ground. So we definitely want to continue to run, 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 run the ball. Establish the run. Um, again, last week... Uh, we had a great Russian, um, great Russian week. Miles Sanders, he had like 80 yards last week. Um, a really good week for him. Um, Boston Scott got the ball. It was a really good, you know, balanced run attack from us last week. And it looks like Washington is going to give us the same thing this week. So we have to take advantage of keeping that ball on the ground too. Even though, like I said, their secondary has been underwhelming. They have been underachieving. But those guys are talented in their secondary. Again, like I said, they've been underachieving. So we don't want to just, you know, bank on the fact that they're going to have another super bad week. You know, it could be any given day when they turn their lights on, and that could be <laughs> this week. But we do want to keep that run game as our identity. But, y'all, it's Thursday. We got a game on tonight, Steelers-Browns. Who are y'all taking? I'm honestly going to take the Browns tonight because I think that – um, I mean, the Steelers' defense has played good, but, I mean, it was the Patriots. Um, it was the um, – they played the Bengals week one, and the Bengals have obviously been knocked off their game. Um, I think the Browns <laughs> – Without T.J. Watt, I don't see the Steelers being able to stop the run, stop Nick Chubb, essentially. So, I'm going to give the Browns the edge over the Steelers tonight. Now, my mom is a Steelers fan, so, of course, I'm going to be rooting for the Steelers because that's her team. She wants her team to win. But, y'all, let me know what you think about this matchup with the Washington football team. Make sure you like this video. Make sure you leave a comment. Subscribe. Keep rocking with me. Check out the links down below. Buy me a coffee. Help through this channel. Shout out to the official smell on the Spizzle. It's a merch collection. Until I talk to you guys next time. Bye.